Hi, my name is Liam Sorter, and for the last two years, we've been building an application pipeline in Notion for our startup. In that time, we've had over a thousand applications from all over the world, and we've had to make a lot of changes. You know, Notion's not meant to be an end-to-end -end hiring program, but we've made something that's not just scalable, but it's very easy for us to change over time and adapt to our company and hiring practices. And yeah, I'm really excited to share it with everyone. Now, one of the focal points of my time hiring at big tech companies was how do we create a great candidate experience? And this is an experience that candidates both feel as if their time is respected, uh, but also one that they'll remember for all the right reasons. And to be honest, there is no simple answer. There is no one size fits all for hiring. And it's something that you have to make changes to. So what we've tried to do with this template is to create something that does give you that healthy baseline to work off of. And as you grow your company, as you grow your own hiring practices and what works for you, you can adapt this template over time to fit that. You know, I'm sure we've all had experiences in the past where we applied for a role and maybe you got ghosted or maybe you went into that interview and you just didn't feel good. You know, there's, there's a lot of issues that can come up throughout hiring. And again, there's no perfect way to do it. So what I really want to do with this template is to help more companies to create a better candidate experience, to create a great candidate experience. And by doing that, not only do you show the kind of company you are, but you'll also make better hiring decisions along the way. So that is a quick overview of what this template actually is. Now what I want to do is just jump in and show you what this looks like from one, the candidate perspective, and two, from the hiring manager perspective. So starting off with the applicant's point of view. So we have this careers page over here. This is one of the public pages that we have. There's public pages and then private pages for all of the, the internal stuff. This is what they're going to see. So we have an about section here. Everything in this bit here is under a sync block, which means any changes you make will actually be propagated throughout. So every single job listing will use this sync block inside of it. So if you have 50 different openings and you want to make a small change to something about your company, this will propagate through every single one of them. We also have the our values section. So this is really important for retention, especially. You know, once applicants are taking a look at your career page, you can get a little bit of an idea of what the company's like through the about section. But for them to really resonate with your vision and your values, having something just explicit here and super clear is a great way to kind of inform them and demystify any ambiguity beforehand. Then we have the opening section. If you want, you could split this by role function. So uh, engineering, design, product, etc. If you don't have that many roles, then just use it as one list. It makes it easy to navigate. We have a few pieces of criteria here, such as location. Again, you can change this to whatever fits you. Um, we have the type, so contract, full-time, maternity cover, etc., etc. Uh, we also have a salary band. So again, not every company is going to be able to offer this, but if you can, really good thing to have there. Um, super important for attracting good talent as well. So taking a look at the research scientist role that we have open. Here you can see, again, the, the pasted information from the sync block, and then just very clear sections about each part of the, the function, the requirements, and even the hiring process as well. So if you can, Document as much as you can about the hiring process. What steps do you take? How long will it be between you talking to them and you getting back to them? You know, again, the more you can demystify here, the better candidate experience this is going to be. And then at the bottom here, we have a application form. So uh, Notion lets you actually embed any website into a page. So what you can do here is just take an application form from any website uh, we recommend Notion Forms. That's what I've been using for our startup. Uh, and you can embed it directly into the application page. So you don't have to send them off-site and everything can be done within here. So now let's take a look at what it looks like as a hiring manager. So you can see here we have a hiring dashboard with a bunch of pages in it. 
The main thing we'll focus on here is the applications tracker and the role directory. So you can see here we filter by open, filled and all roles. This is especially useful if maybe you had a listing in your team previously and when you're creating a new role, you want to go back and just reference it or maybe take some of the hiring practices that went along with it. Um, yeah, this is this is nice as a, an archiving area. Then let's say you're a hiring manager and you have a new role that you want to open. You come down here, click on new and we'll call this engineering role A very descriptive name then let's open this page and we have a bunch of properties so you can set the team the hiring manager but the most important thing here is the job id so if you're hiring for multiple roles at the same time especially with multiple hiring managers this is super hard to do in a clean way in notion there's a bunch of approaches that i've seen been done on it um but the way that we've been doing it for the past couple of years now is just use a job id um, this is what a bunch of different systems use, um, kind of like more traditional hiring tools. Um, but it's a great way just to make it easy for you to filter down. So the last role that we had open, there was over 400 applicants for it. So we need a way to be able to filter just for that role specifically. Then you can see we have a staging area. So whenever you edit pages in Notion, as you might know, these are pushed immediately. If you have a public page, this is no different. So if you're publicly editing a page while you're creating it, this isn't going to look great for the people that are viewing your page. So the best thing you should do here is create everything under a staging area, get some feedback from your team, and then once you're ready, paste it into a public listing on the careers page. Uh, you can see also this uh, sync block that we mentioned earlier and a big warning saying, do not touch this. And again, if you have any special... Um, factors in your job listings or there's anything you want to include here uh, this can all be done within the template and then we have the application form so you've opened your listing and now you want to check your applicants so we go over here and you can see we have a couple of applicants in already uh, from these very realistic sounding names and we have a few different uh, filters up here um, we filter by active the client pending the client manual and all applications. The main reason that we filter by the client pending, the client pending manual, and all applications is once you're getting a bunch of people all applying at once, it can be very easy for people to kind of slip by the wayside. So what we want to do is make sure that everyone who applies, we are still keeping track of them and can do it in a meaningful way. So even if there's someone that might not be a good fit at this time, we can go over here and rather than selecting the client, which immediately takes them out of the app, active applications, we can just go to this one pending notice and it still keeps them within the active applications menu. So let's bring Sarah back to the submitted phase and now we can take a look at their submission. So here Sarah has submitted a CV, a cover letter and provided a portfolio site and info section. Uh, all of these things, again, you can customize into your own application form for whatever works best for you. Two other things that we have here is a couple of formulas. One is the time since the last update. So let's say you move someone to the next stage. So we have some buttons down here to make this a little bit easier. Uh, so let's say they have been proceeded to the test stage. You can see this last updated field just got updated. And now time since update is now zero days. Again, this makes it just a lot easier to keep track of how long it's been since you last spoke to an applicant. Uh, as a general rule of thumb, you don't really want to go more than five working days without communication with an applicant. Anything more than that, and that's where you're kind of harming that uh, candidate experience. Uh, inside here, you can also as well see the job ID. Um, this is something that you can do within a lot of application form uh, submission processes is actually have a hidden field that when you're actually submitting this form, it will pass through this data, even if they don't have to enter it manually. You know, an applicant doesn't need to see the job ID. Um, so yeah, nice thing to hide if you can with the software that you're using. But yeah, then we have the, the kind of the bulk of it here, uh, which is where we have the phone screen, the take home test and technical interview. There's a few approaches that we've kind of played with over the last couple of years. Previously, we had a separate section for the application feed and a separate section for all the interviews. 
And over time, we realized that this is easy just to have in one section in a single application feed. So what we do is we have these little toggle menus down here. And this is where any hiring manager can come in, any interview can come in, and they have this entire section that breaks everything they need down for them. So interview prep, making sure that they've actually read the candidate CV. Um, you know, they've been able to kind of understand a little about them, not just from the, the time that they sent the initial email out, but also recently just refreshing them before the call. Also making sure they're completely up to speed on all of the role responsibilities, team structure, the kind of person that they're looking for. Again, this is more relevant for bigger companies where the hiring manager and the phone screen interviewer may not necessarily be the same person. Then we have a introduction to the company itself, uh, a bit about the role and just kind of a, a casual um, easing into the, to the chat. Then a little section here on past experience. There's a little button here that brings in a few different um, sections that you can work with. So if there's a question that you want to ask in advance, you can write it here. If anything comes up in the call or any comments, again, nice things to include for you to refer back to later. Then always leaving some time at the end, so a closing area, giving people a chance to ask questions as well. Always good to do at this stage. And if you do want to move forward with them, you know, maybe you don't need to confer with your team and you're ready to move straight to the next step. Um, just giving them a little bit of information and to what that step is like. If you kind of took the advice from before and you've included this in the application page anyway, great. Um, but here's a chance for you to explain a little bit more of how that process works and anything that they might need to prep for that. And then thank them for their time and letting them know that you'll be in touch as soon as you can. Then we also have a few buttons here just to say kind of how you felt about the phone screen, whether you felt it was a good fit. So let's say with Sarah, it was a strong inclined. You can see up here, we updated the last updated page and the phone screen results section has been set to strong inclined. We also have this little section down here, which we go into a little bit more information in, uh, in the actual guide. Um, but yeah, this is something that, that you can use to keep track of kind of how good of a fit a candidate might be on a few different uh, areas. Then there's also a notes section. So if there's any notes that you make throughout the process that may not necessarily be attached to a single part of the process, but just you know more wide uh, comments about the candidate, you can put that down here. If you do go forward with them or you decide not to, then again, this is a good way to just kind of sum up any final thoughts outside of the specific steps themselves. Once you're ready to kind of go through with either making an offer or send a rejection, you can use these buttons down here. And then it's kind of up to you. You send your emails out, you make your offer and you make your team a little bit better. That is a little overview of the template. Uh, the only other thing I mentioned as well is we do have a little question bank here. So this is kind of separated based on generic roles, um, engineering, product. Uh, any other questions you can also add here if you have your own one. And a good thing here is even if you don't have a question that's super relevant to the, the role itself, it still gives you a good chance to kind of think of questions like these, which are used in a lot of big uh, tech companies already and a lot of small studios that really give you a chance to understand some of the thinking um, behind the people that you're speaking to. So that's a little preview of this template and how you can start creating great candidate experiences and start hiring through Notion. You can pick it up at the link in the description down below. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email. And with that, thank you for watching.